play. Our brains are hardwired for play. Evolution has selected over millions and billions of years for play in animals and in humans. And you know what? Evolution does a really, really good job of deselecting traits that aren't advantageous to us and selecting traits for competitive advantage. Nature isn't stupid, and it's selected for play. Throughout the animal kingdom, for example, ants. Ants play. Maybe you didn't know that. But when they're playing, they're learning the social order and dynamics of things. Rats play. But what you might not have known is that rats that play more have bigger brains, and they learn tasks better and skills. Kittens play. We all know kittens play. But what you may not know is that kittens deprived of play are unable to interact socially. They can still hunt, but they can't be social. Bears play. But what you may not know is that bears that play more survive longer. It's not the bears that learn how to fish better. It's the ones that play more. And a final really interesting study has been shown correlation between play and brain size. The more you play, the bigger the brains there are. Dolphins, pretty big brains, play a lot. But who do you think with the biggest brains are the biggest players? Yours truly, humans. Kids play, we play, of every nationality, of every race, of every color, of every religion. It's a universal thing, we play. And it's not just kids, it's adults too. Really cool term, neoteny. The retention of play and juvenile traits in adults. And who are the biggest neotenists? Humans. We play sports. We do it for fun, or as Olympiads, or as professionals. We play musical instruments. We dance. We kiss. We sing. We just goof around. We are designed by nature to play from birth to old age. We're designed to do that continuously, to play and play a lot and not stop playing. It is a huge benefit. Just like there's benefits to animals, there's benefits to humans. For example, it's been shown to stimulate nerve growth in the amygdala, an area where it controls emotions. It's been shown to promote prefrontal cortex development, where a lot of cognition is happening. As a result, what happens? We develop more emotional maturity if we play more. We develop better decision-making ability if we play more. And these guys are facts. It's not fiction, it's not story tale, it's not make believe. It's cold, hard science. Okay? These are the benefits to play. It is a genetic birthright that we have, like walking or speaking or seeing. And if we handicap ourselves with play, we handicap ourselves as if we would with any other birthright that we have. We hold ourselves back. Little exercise just for a second. Close your eyes. And try to imagine a world without play. Okay, it's imagine a world without theater, without the arts, without song, without dancing. Uh, you know, it's without soccer, without football, without laughter. What does this world look like? It's pretty bleak. It's pretty glum. Now imagine your workplace. Is it fun? Is it playful? Or maybe the workplace of your friends here were sort of forward thinking. Is it fun? Is it playful? Or is it crap? Is it autocratic, controlling, restrictive, and untrusting and unfulfilling? We have this concept that the opposite of play is work. We even feel guilty if we're seen playing at work. Like, oh, my colleagues see me laughing, I must not have enough work. Or, oh, I gotta hide because my boss might see me. He's gonna think I'm not working hard, right? But I have news for you, our thinking is backwards. The opposite of play is not work. The opposite of play is depression. It's depression. In fact, play improves our work. Just like there's benefits for humans and animals, there's benefits for play at work. For example, it stimulates creativity. It increases our openness to change. It improves our ability to learn. It provides a sense of purpose and mastery, two key motivational things that increase productivity through play. And before you start thinking, oh, play is just not serious, play doesn't mean frivolous. You know, the professional athlete that loves skiing, he's serious about it, but he loves it. He's having fun. He's in the groove. He's in flow. You know, a doctor might be serious, but laughter is still a great medicine. Our thinking is backwards. We shouldn't be feeling guilty. We should be celebrating play.